President Biden has repeatedly called on Congress to do something about guns by banning assault weapons used in the deadliest shootings, but the votes just aren't there in the Senate. 60 votes are needed to overcome a likely filibuster. The Senate chaplain called out the inaction Tuesday after the latest shooting in Nashville. Lord, when babies die at a church school, it is time for us to move beyond thoughts and prayers. Lord, deliver our senators from the paralysis of analysis that waits for the miraculous. And House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has avoided commenting at all on the Nashville shooting. No statements, no tweets, no continuing to, he's continuing to ignore questions from reporters. Is there anything that Congress can do to respond to the shootings in Nashville? I guess, uh, Speaker McCarthy, why haven't you made a comment on the school shooting in Nashville? Why don't you come to the press conference tomorrow and ask me a question, all right? Joining us now, former communications advisor to speakers Ryan and Boehner, Brandon Buck, and Washington Post senior national political correspondent Ashley Parker. So, and Ashley's co-author of, of a story today on the AR-15s, how it increased profits for the gun makers. Brandon, let's talk about Speaker McCarthy. Why hasn't he said anything? Yeah, because I don't think he has a whole lot of answers. And this is the, uh, an issue that Republicans have shown very little interest uh, in taking on. Look, I. There's, there's a reality or at least uh, an argument that a lot of Republicans will make that there's not a lot that they can do, that, that they've resigned themselves, uh, that no law changes are going to make a big difference. That does feel a little bit like a, a political excuse. Um, but let's remember, they, the Senate did lead on uh, gun control reform last Congress after uh, the tragedy in Uvalde. Uh, they, they were able to pass something. The center sort of powered through and got something done. Um, but that is actually having some uh, political uh, blowback now. I was talking with somebody in the Senate earlier today and said that that vote, it still hangs out there as, as trouble for a lot of senators. Uh, John Cornyn, uh, senator from, from Texas, led on that, someone who hopes to be uh, leader of the Senate Republican Conference of Four. And that's probably going to be hung around his neck if, when he tries to do that, because it divides Republicans. It's a very unpopular vote uh, with the base. And as we have talked uh, at great length on this show about in the past, Republicans care much more about the base than they do about winning general elections. Uh, and, and, and they are quite content to ignore the middle that would like to see a lot of action on this. And Ashley, they can't seem to get it across the finish line and certainly not. They won't be able to in the House. Well, that's right. And again, I just want to briefly go back to um, when I covered Congress and when Brendan uh, worked for Speaker Boehner when the Newtown massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School happened and 20 first graders were killed um, with an AR-15 style weapon. And even then, when there was a ton of moral outrage and what seemed like it should have been political will, no one could get any sort of major legislation across the finish line. And that was sort of the moment in my head from my reporting. I said, this is going to be an issue that is almost always intractable in Congress. And that's just what we're seeing now. And Ashley, is it the money from the NRA? Because they've lost a lot of clout in the last couple of years. Is it the gun manufacturers? Um, what is driving this? Because the voters in a completely different place. The voters are. What's driving this is, and the NRA has lost a ton of clout, um, what's driving this is what Brendan said, which is among the Republican base. And I would just urge everyone, the Washington Post has this incredible series out this week on the AR-15 and how it has become an American icon, incredibly divisive, but also incredibly uh, interwoven into the fabric of our nation. Um, and among the base, some of these votes um, are, are just, they are political uh, non-starters. And that's what Republicans fear most of all. And Brendan, uh, as you pointed out, John Cornyn led, it, led the way last time, but assault weapon ban. The assault weapon ban has some popularity even with gun owners. Yeah, but not with Republican base voters and, and, and not with the loudest voters. I mean, that's the, one of the issues of, of politics. Even if you, you, could, you could probably find a poll that says Republicans 
your generic Republican voter would be okay with something like this, but it's the ones who mobilize, uh, make their voice heard, uh, run campaigns against members of Congress. I mean, look, I think the, the NRA being the boogeyman has always been overstated. It is Republican base voters, people who care about this issue, who make a lot of noise that scare off members every time. I, certainly the NRA could contributed to it, but it's mostly voters themselves. Brandon Buck, Ashley Parker, as always, thank you both so much.